Welcome to the PFSense Getting Started Guide. In the previous video, I explained how you can install PFSense on any hardware. If you want to know how to install it, you can go and watch that part. Today, we're just going to look at the web graphical user interface and how we can configure PFSense initially. Once you have installed PFSense, you should see a IP address for your LAN. In the previous video, I explained how you can change this IP address to whatever the IP address you would like to have. For a typical installation, you probably don't need to change that LAN IP address. But however, if you are behind a NAT situation or you are behind a virtual machine that actually provide the DSCP, you probably would like to change this IP address. And again, I explained how to change the IP address on my previous video. In whatever the case, uh, what you need to know is what is your IP address for your LAN interface. In my case, it would be 10.10.0.9. So once you know that IP address, you can go to any computer that has the same connection same NAT connection uh, or in other words, same LAN segment or same network segment as the PFSense install and then enter that IP address on your one of your web browsers. So in this case, 10.10.0.9 and it'll get you to this welcome to PFSense login page. When you install PFSense for the first time, the username should be admin and the password should be pfsense, all lowercase. If you're not sure about what username and password is, or if the pfsense has changed the default password and username, you can go to their website or search on Google and it should give you the information on the default username and password. Now, if you're not sh sure if somebody had changed the password or for whatever reason its password is not working, even the default one listed on the internet, what you can do actually, you can reset the web graphical web user interface by going into this option, either reset the web configurator password, or you can actually set everything back to factory default. That should get you back into the default password and username. So assuming you now know the username and password, you can go admin and pfsense for default username and password. And press login. And once you log in, the first thing you're gonna see, you're gonna see a warning saying that the admin account password is still default and you should go to password um, manager to change the username and password. But we're gonna leave that for the last. So first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna go through the setup process. You will have the welcome to PFSense software screen. If you would like to know more information, you can click on learn more. It will get you to NetGate website. Otherwise, you can click next. It'll give you some information about 24-7 global support, uh, which is a paid service by NetGate. If you don't need it, you can again go next. The host name can be anything you like. Typically, it should be um, uh, something that use for identification of your pfsense install on the network. So I would either leave as pfsense or I would add something like home uh, pfsense, something like that. Could be anything you like. So in my case, I'm just gonna leave it as pfsense. For domain, the same thing, uh, idea, same idea, uh, can be used. Uh, you can use either, you can simply leave it as local domain or you can use a domain that you already own. In my case, I'm gonna go sanuja.net. So that would be my domain. For DNS server, you can use any publicly available DNS server. So I'm gonna use the Google one as my primary, that would be 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And my secondary, I'm going to use Cloudflare. It should be 1.1.1.1. .1 .1 .1. 
Uh, if you don't know uh, what DNS servers to use, you can simply go to Google and then go um, Google public DNS and it will give you the one which is 8.8.8.8 .8 and uh, the other one Google has is 8.8.4.4 and then you can also use a third party another party that would be Cloudflare one so if you go cloud flare public dns and it is 1.1.1.1 so that's what i'm using here but you can use whatever you know dns server you would like to use i'm also going to set the override dns what it does is basically if there's other dns servers on the same network it will override that configuration with the pfsense dns and then click next and it'll give you an option to enter time server i'll just leave what it is the 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 default time server and then make sure you select something that the time zone that is related to you some depending on where you are in my case uh, i'm in north america and i'm gonna find uh, the one for the North America so I'm gonna go America and then I will find uh, I'm gonna try to find Edmonton right here because I'm in um, Alberta America Edmonton is the closest correct uh, time zone so select that one this is very important because if you pick a wrong time zone and you are running VPN and things like ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services, the time not syncing correctly on the network devices may cause authentication errors. So especially with uh, Microsoft ADDS, the time uh, stamp on tickets that going into Kerbo servers for authentication does matter. So it's very important that your time zone is correctly set and click next i'm going to leave this as dscp but you're more than welcome to set to static if you have a, a isp internet service provider that has a static ip address you should select static but in my case it's going to be dscp um, you can leave these things blank if you don't know what you're doing or you don't want to get into any uh, you know um, advanced settings i would leave all of these things blank uh, in other words like by default settings and then make sure these are clicked uh, block private network from entering via LAN and block non-internet routed networks from entering WAN so these are basic two firewall protocols that we're going to use firewall rules we're going to use for now so those are turned on by default but if you would like to turn it off obviously you can turn it off like, like that so click next and the LAN IP address, I change it from the default 192 address to this one. I we're gonna, I'm gonna leave it as it is, but if you would like to change it to something else, you can do it from here as well. If you change this LAN IP address, your web configurator needs to reload because see, if you are in that LAN IP address, so if you change this address, it will reload. So click next. So this is the admin username and password that they give you an option to change. So I'm going to change it mine. And you can click next. And then that password, uh, please change your password error message at the top will disappear. Finally, you're going to click reload. What that's going to do actually is going to reload the entire configuration into the pfSense settings. Then you will get into this screen. The wizard is complete. And then press finish. Once you finish, you will get this message, the copyright message and non-commercial use message uh, from the NetGate. 
you can read up on certain information if you would like to have that information with you by clicking on the trademark guideline agreements otherwise only thing you need to do is simply accept it and it will give you a thank you message you may do this user survey and then close so this is your basic dashboard this is what it look like it will have some information about netgate support information community information how to get some uh, free help from the community if you're interested interested that information is here it'll also have the information about interfaces so you at the initially you should have only two interfaces the wang and the lan but you you can add additional interfaces later and i will explain that uh, on a later video and you can move all of these blocks around for example if you would like to keep this but if you want to move this one up and you can actually move it like that and it'll stay there you can also remove items by doing that and it'll remove that item you can add items so if you want to add um, additional information you can add them like that so if you want to know traffic graphs i just added a traffic graph basically we go here but i will just remove it and i'll just show it to you so you click here available add-ons uh, or what is it called it's called available widgets and then you can go traffic graphs and you can add one and then it'll show up a traffic graphs and there are additional settings you can change on the traffic graphs like the scaling how smooth it needs to be uh, things like that and if you save it you know it'll change how it works so this is actually live traffic that coming in on the left hand side there will be system information again you can remove it uh, you can change certain settings on it right here you can remove certain parts um, and you can either add all or remove all it'll give you some information about your device what kind of uh, version you have installed and it'll also give you an option to you know update any additional information additionally it'll show you the cpu load memory usage and basic information related to your device for now i will not go any more detail into this in on my next video i will talk about different options we have under systems interfaces um, and firewall rules and services and uh, the other uh, information that you can find here especially i'm going to be talking about package manager and different packages available to improve the performance and capabilities of pfSense in on my next video if you have any additional questions or you would like to read up on what we just uh, covered you you are more than welcome to visit my website i will leave a link to this site and the site will have explanation on how to get it started and how to get this thing installed if you have any questions you are more than welcome to contact me and thank you for tuning in